Right, good afternoon, everybody. I um, hope you can hear me okay. My name's David Walker. I'm the Managing Director of Ladder and Fencing Industries. I'm standing in today for Martin Brook. You may have seen his name in the programme. Unfortunately, Martin can't make it with us today. He's been taken poorly, so you've got me for 20 minutes or so. Um, I'm also, um, as well as being the Managing Director of a manufacturing business, I sit on the Ladder Association Executive Committee and also sit on their council. So I have some experience with the way they, way they do things. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you for about 20 minutes. I'm going to deliver what we call the Ladder Association Advocate Scheme, which is a standard sort of presentation we do for this type of event. Um, and it's intended to keep ladder users and those people who are sat supervising ladder users um, completely up to date with all the different legislation and best practice that's going on out there uh, in the marketplace. Um, as a ladder advocate, I'll also talk to you about some of the myths and misconceptions that are going on at the moment about ladder use and hopefully um, bring you up to date with some of those things as well, especially in light of the work height regulations that came in in 2005 and a lot of the spin that came off that and what actually the, the law demands. Um, the Ladder Association has said to me, you're only allowed to mention your business once, um, so I'll mention it now. Um, ladder, and, ladder and fencing industries manufacture ladder products into the construction industry, uh, portable access equipment, that's ladders generally, um, and we've been around since 1947 and are a founding member of the Ladder Association. Uh, the Ladder Association today um, represents all aspects of the ladder industry. Uh, it includes manufacturers, suppliers, hirers, trainers, in fact anybody who's got a vested interest in making sure that ladders are being used properly in the marketplace. Its membership is open to everybody. Um, and our message is a simple one. It's up there on the board. It's been delivered. It's been produced with the health and safety executive in mind. And it says quite simply, if it's right to use a ladder, then use the right ladder and get trained to use it safely. And you can see there the emphasis is on the words using the right ladder and getting trained to use it safely. So who are the Ladder Association? Well, we are the principal trade body for ladders. And as I said, we comprise manufacturers, suppliers, hirers, and trainers. Um, and with the fact that there are an estimated 2 million ladders in use every day in the workplace in the UK, which is a heck of a lot of products, we have a very uh, simple aim of making sure we promote uh, ladder skills, safety, and best practice. And we have developed, uh, manage, and deliver what has now become recognised as the industry standard uh, training package, training scheme. The association fulfils um, its roles um, through, a ver through various committees. There are two primary committees. One of them is a technical committee, which obviously deals with the manufacturing side, making sure that ladders meet specific standards. And the other one's the training committee, which is all to do with best practice. There are various other committees as well, but they're the two principal ones. So what does the association do? Well, we fulfill a number of roles. Um, essentially, we champion and promote ladders as being an invaluable piece of workplace equipment. And we do this through seminars, conferences, um, and exhibitions like, like the one today, and also with articles in the trade press, which you'll see from time to time. Um, the Ladder Association has a number of uh, safety-related publications, which I'll mention uh, a little bit later on. Um, also some products and we have a website which is um, uh, provides information on all aspects of ladder and step ladder use. And as I've said we have a training course um, which is designed to deliver confidence and competence to those people who either manage or use ladders themselves. And the two specialist committees I've mentioned for setting both national and international standards. And as a mem mem member of the Access Industry Forum, uh, we're very committed to advancing ladder safety. And I'll talk a little bit about that towards the end of this um, small presentation as well. A little bit about fact versus fiction. This is where um, it gets a little bit interesting as far as I'm concerned. Because one of the most common questions I'm asked is how do you deal with the ladder ban? Um, and contrary to what you might read in the popular press, um, ladders are not banned. In fact. Um, today, Alison Wellens, who was up here for the first presentation, whether you were here or not for that, she's, she's 
head of slips and trips at the HSC, said most of what I wanted to say in this presentation. Um, I'll just quote uh, what Geoffrey Podger said. He's the chief executive, the health and safety executive. Um, he said, let me be clear, ladders are not banned, and HSC has been saying this since 2005, when the work at height regulations were introduced. So that's what the HSC stance is on this. And with some two million ladders in use, they remain an indispensable piece of equipment for use in a variety of different applications where they do have a purpose in the workplace. As long as, of course, the task is straightforward, uh, the duration of the work is short, and the task has had a, a risk assessment to show that it's of low risk. Now, ladders have been round for millenniums. Jacob didn't ascend to heaven using a scissor lift. Your kids don't play snakes and podiums, and you don't climb the moot of success. Of course, you use a ladder. And I'm having a bit of a joke, but the principle is a serious one. Um, it's not about banning ladders. It's about using them safely and correctly, and it's about considering them in your arsenal of equipment when you are working at height as a potential perfectly appropriate piece of equipment to be used. So what's the acid test for whether or not a ladder is a suitable piece of equipment to be used uh, in a task? Well, all work at height is subject to a risk assessment. And when you do your risk assess uh, assessment, as long as the task is of low risk and is of short duration, then a ladder may be appropriate. And when we talk about uh, short duration, we're talking about 30 minutes as a rule of thumb for any one position, or maybe a series of 30 minutes in one position. When we talk about uh, low risk, you have to consider the task in hand and think about the forces that may be applied in doing the work that you're going to be doing and whether there's going to be any, anything that may unbalance you in the use of the ladder. Um, examples of that include things like uh, pulling cables through cable trays, which is a question I had uh, today at the lunchtime session, where when you are pulling on something, it can come loose suddenly and in doing so can make you topple off the product. Or it may be if you're drilling into a wall and you have lots of sideways force that may push you one way, one way or the other. So just consider the forces involved with the task in hand. The second thing, which is a very important one, is about overreach, which is common sense when you think about it, but I would guess that all of you have used a ladder at some time or other and you've been tempted just to reach out a little bit further than you should do, uh, making the ladder unstable. Just think about your belt buckle. Your belt buckle should stay within the sides of the product as you move from left to right whenever you're doing a job, as a rule of thumb. And the third thing, there's plenty of other things, but just for, the, just for this presentation to consider um, is maintaining three points of contact. It's not essential that you maintain three points of contact throughout a job, but it's preferable that you do. And if you do only have two points of contact, make sure for it's as short a time as possible. Ladders can only fall over in one of four ways. Right? They can slip at the top, they can slip out at the bottom, they can flip so when you climb the ladder, hold on to one side of it, reach and it turns on its axis, uh, or they can um, what's the other one? Um, fall backwards where they're at a shallow angle and they come back off the substrate. That's it. That's, that's the only way a ladder can fall. If you tie it off at the top, you eliminate all those potentials from happening. So if you're going to go away with any message from this presentation, tie your ladder off at the top if you get the chance to do it. A little bit of uh, information about what I call um, global risk. Um, global risk is uh, not about the risk that you're at when you're at height. It's about the risk in getting to height. Um, you may well be um, better off and in a safer position to carry out the work on alternative equipment to ladders because when you're at height, it provides you with that platform you need to do the job in a safer way. But in erecting the equipment, you may be introducing new risks. In getting the equipment to site, you may introduce new risks. In the footprint that that equipment has, such as um, uh, blocking off gangways or maybe introducing trip hazards or that type of nature, you're introducing new risks all the time. So if you're introducing risks that um, in all generate more risk 
uh, because the, the job in hand is quite short duration and low risk, then perhaps you should think about it. I'll give you an example. Um, Water-fed bowsers are used a lot nowadays for win the window cleaning industry uh, because obviously it prevents the window cleaning from having to go to height, which is an excellent thing, that's exactly right. But if those water bowsers aren't secured properly in a vehicle, if that vehicle is involved in a road traffic accident, it'll mash everybody inside the vehicle. And they've done tests at 30 miles an hour to demonstrate that. So you're not got, you've got a safer situation of work with the guy doing his work, but if the water bowser isn't secured properly in a vehicle, you may have transferred the risk from one place to another. That's what I call global risk. So just think about the overall, overall thing. Okay, um, going on to examples here. This is just one example. You probably read it in the press yourself. There are lots of examples. They come up two or three times a month where a council's banned the use of ladders and generated huge costs for very simple jobs or there'll be a particular construction company that said you can't use ladders on site. All I will say is be careful if that's what you're doing because if you're saying you can't use ladders, you may be forcing people to use other equipment that may not be quite as safe as a ladder for that particular job. So what do the regulations say? Well, you probably know all this as well, if not better than I do, but I'll read it off the screen there. You must ensure that everyone involved in work at height is competent or if being trained, is supervised by a competent person. Uh, this includes involvement in organisation, planning, supervision, and the supply and maintenance of equipment. Uh, the regulations also say that where other precautions do not entirely limit, eliminate the risk of a fall occurring, you must, as far as is reasonably practical to do so, train those who will be working at height how to avoid falling and how to avoid them or minimise injury to themselves should they fall. So the, the regulations have a hierarchy which we all know about. The first principle is that avoid working at height altogether if you possibly can. Um, if you're going to use work equipment or other measures to prevent falls, then that work, that work equipment must be appropriate for the job. And where you cannot eliminate the risk of fall, you must use work equipment or other measures to minimise the distance and consequences of a fall should one occur. The, the main thing I'm getting to here is that you've got to be competent at what, at what you're doing which comes on to the age-old question, what is competency? I think it's a combination of three things. You can't say any one of those is more important than the other, but certainly knowledge, experience, very important. Training is also very important. There's only one of those you can actually demonstrate that you have and prove that you have, and that's training. And that's why training is so important in terms of mitigating uh, risk. A little word about um, the Ladder Association um, training and what it covers. Um, it covers when to use ladders and step ladders, um, how to identify the hazards and minimize the risk, and how to position and use ladder products safely, and also how to inspect and maintain ladder products. And who better to deliver uh, a course that's designed to give people all this information than the organisation that um, involve, is involved in the manufacture, design of products and the distribution of the products to the workplace and the safe use of the products in the workplace. Uh, and that's of course the Ladder Association um, who also contribute to the setting of national standards and international standards for ladder use. Um, the Ladder Association currently runs two courses. One is for users and the other one is, in, is for inspection um, of ladders. Um, there are other courses which are being developed at the moment. Um, they're delivered uh, nationally by approved training centres which are um, audited and have to be audited to ensure they meet the right standards. Um, the delegates are all um, subject to a syllabus which is common, commonly de delivered throughout this, all the training centres across the country which lasts for about six hours and all the delegates have to do a theory and a practical test at the end of it to qualify and then they're issued with a ladder card and a, um, a certificate to prove that they've actually done the course successfully. Um, the ladder card is proof that they've been successful in doing the theory and the practical part of that course and it shows on it uh, the elements of the training which they've done, so whether it's use or whether it's inspection at this stage. And both those, um, the ladder card and the certificate are valid for five years. So. Um, the Ladder Association have been doing training now for about two or three years and there are some fairly major 
trainers out there who are pushing people through the system. Um, and you'd get the normal sort of feedback that you expect, well, why do I need to do train to use ladders? What's the point? But you're getting a, we're getting a lot of good feedback um, saying that you can teach old dogs new tricks uh, and people implementing new safe methods of, of work uh, as a result of having gone through the course uh, and also implementing proper uh, maintenance routines for their ladder product. And I don't know if any of you saw the one show when Arthur Smith was on it. Uh, he actually had sat on the ladder course, ladder association course. And if you've got a skeptic who's going to have a go at anything, well, he's the man. But he actually agreed at the end of it. It was a very worthwhile thing to be involved in. So there's 10 things that you need to know if you want a summary of where we are with this. The first thing is that ladders remain an invaluable piece of workplace equipment. If you're not considering ladders as part of the piece of equipment that you should be using, then you may be using the wrong piece of equipment. But you must decide whether it's appropriate to use it through a risk assessment, and that must demonstrate that it's of low risk and short duration. And if you're going to use a ladder, make sure you use the right classification of ladder. Now, there are three standards, effectively, or three classifications. There's what's called the domestic classification, which is class three in, in uh, common terms. It's the BS2037 and BS1129 class three. Domestic product is generally product you'll find from the sheds, and it's not the equipment that should be used on a workplace. It's not of the right duty rating, and it's not capable of dealing with the knocks and bangs that go within the workplace. So it shouldn't be used on, in workplace. Going one step up from then, you have the European norm standard. That's the EN131, which is uh, ladders for use in light trade and light industrial applications. And if you go one step further up there, you have the British standard class one which is the BS2037 1129 class one, and that is for the heavy industrial usage. It's not just about the amount of uh, the duty rating, the, the, the mass that's gonna be used on that product, it's also about the environment it's gonna be used in, whether it can take the knocks of the environment it's in. Uh, moving on from there, we've talked about um, tasks must be of low risk and short duration, and um, short duration is defined as a 30 minute in one position, or a series of 30 minute jobs from one position. And if you're gonna take longer than 30 minutes, then really you need to be considering perhaps using a different product to a ladder. Um, always take the right measures. Uh, what that means is you need to eliminate or minimize the risks associated with the use of the product, the ladder product, uh, before the job starts if you possibly can. And we talked about tying a ladder off, that may, may, involve, may involve that. Um, the, the Ladder Association has a risk assessment card, which is a quick reference card, sits in the pocket, and it's a way of quickly recognizing some of the risks associated with ladders, which you may not have considered. The um, other issue is planning ahead, uh, where well, you need to make sure the work is planned and organized properly, and you also need to cater for the fact that sometimes jobs go wrong, and being sure you can deal with that as well. And you need to make sure you're competent, and very strongly recommended that you use the ladder card to demonstrate that you are competent. Um, ladder Association has introduced recently a resource called Ladder Solve, which you hopefully were found of interest. It's on the Ladder Association website and it's designed to deal with the myths and misconceptions of ladders. It gives you a load of ladder facts, the do's and don'ts of their use. And we use what's called the STEP methodology, where STEP is a, a mnemonic, S stands for site, T stands for task, E stands for equipment, and P stands for people. And under each of those headings, you deal with the risks associated with ladder use. It also goes into more depth about ladder training. And there's an interactive question and queries email facility there. So if you're doing a particular job that you think a ladder is suitable for, but you're not sure, you can get advice from experts as to whether or not you should be using ladders for that sort of application. So that's on the Ladder Association website. Uh, other resources that we have include the Code of Practice, which is um, now recognized as the industry bible for ladder use. It covers employers' uh, responsibilities and user responsibilities. Uh, it deals with the work height regulations, um, with risk avoidance. Um, it deals with the ladder standards and classifications, which I've touched on in this presentation. It deals with the safe use of ladders and step ladders and the importance of planning ahead together with inspection and taking care and maintaining products properly. And this is also available from the Ladder Association website. Uh, we do two posters, one is for ladders and one is uh, for step ladders, and they're graphical representations of 
do's and don'ts of ladder use. So one shows a user doing everything wrong and one shows a user doing everything right. It allows for quick reference to doing the, doing the job properly. And we have a number of other resources available. I've already mentioned the risk assessment card, which is on there. Um, we do a ladder book, which is a basic a quick reference guide um, for all the basics on safe ladder use. There's a sticker, which is the bottom one there, which is a ladder inspection sticker, which you can just keep putting one on top of the other until such time you have to peel them all off. And that gives you a quick way of making sure that if, lad if and when ladders are maintained and inspected, then there can be a, re a proper record of that maintained on the product, as well as you know back in the back office. And there's um, a poster that we have available as well. If you've got people in canteens who are using ladders a lot, for example, you could perhaps put the poster up there to just make people familiar, more familiar with the types and risks associated with ladder use. Um, the Ladder Association gets involved with um, a number of annual initiatives. Um, the, the HSE's Ladder Exchange is one of those, um, where our members front effectively a shop uh, on allowing um, people who are using dodgy ladder product to exchange them for at a part exchange rate for a, for a new product. So they can basically get their hands on new product at a very much discounted rate. Um, I think to date there have been over 8,000 ladders exchanged uh, with this. Um, last year, um, when the HSC ran it between September and November, there was 1,024 products exchanged. So it's, it's, a good, it's a good thing because at least it's making people think about it. If you've got a product that's not in good order, you really shouldn't be using it, and this is an opportunity to change it. And if they don't do it on this particular occasion, well, they will do it because they're starting to think about it. So it's, it's a good initiative. Obviously, we get involved with the IOSH conference and exhibition, and we also get involved with the Safety and Health Expo in the Access Industry Live part of that and in the knowledge base. The Ladder Association are very heavily involved with trends and developments. We try and build new safety into ladder products. At the moment, we're looking at stability and seeing how we can make ladder product more stable. Uh, also in standards development to make sure that manufacturing meets sta the, the right standards across the board. And obviously also in safe pra practice as well, safe and best practice. So our message is a simple one. Uh, if it's right to use a ladder, use the right ladder and get trained to use it safely. Uh, this last slide is about the Access Industry Forum, which I know you know all about already, and we have a stand just out there, actually. Neil Tomlinson is fronting an awful lot of questions on the Access Industry Forum today. It is a, it is a means where all the people associated with getting to height, with all the different methods of doing it, can come together and provide a common answer to lots of people's different uh, questions and uh, industry practices that, 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 that are going on. So, that's uh, the end of the presentation. Uh, does anybody have any questions at all? Uh, why was the ladder industry caught so badly on the wrong foot when 18 months back when this new legislation came out? It was as though ladders were going to be taken away completely from industry? <laughs> I think um, it's a very good question. It, it could be answered in perhaps a lot of ways. Um, I, think, I think probably because at the time when the regulations came in in 2005, um, the Ladder Association was a very small organization comprising essentially manufacturers, um, which meant that we had little industry voice. There were different um, work groups set up to inform the work height regulations of um, best practice and how things should be set up. Ladders were never banned, but because there were so many different spins that came off it and the Ladder Association weren't well set up to deal with those spins, it tended to get a bit of a foothold. Yeah. And ever since it's been trying to say, well, actually, you know, they're not banned. They, they should be considered as part of, as part of the armory. So it, 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 was, it was probably because we weren't well set up then to deal with what happened, I think. And since then, there's been a, a fairly significant change in the, in the structure of the association to, pro was, to provide better advice. Do you think it was the way the law or the regulations were interpreted, inter I, inter written out incorrectly? It, it, just to repeat what I think you asked, is it, is it to do with interpretation of the law? Yes. Um, yes. I, th I think so. I, mm. I think that goes on today. There's an awful lot of people who interpret the regulations their own way. Mm. And there's, there's a difficulty that comes with this because people who are in charge of work practice on a, on a particular, in a particular site or in a particular company may just take the easy option and say, no ladders. Yeah. 
because that, that means I don't have to worry about yeah. ladder use. Because in some cases, that makes the job more dangerous, doesn't it? Well, that's, <laughs> that's the message I'm trying to put yeah. across, and yeah. uh, thank, thank you for saying it, because it, it, it is absolutely the case. If you're doing, if you're doing low-level work, which is of low risk and short duration, then you're probably doing the right thing by using a ladder. And yeah. if you bring something else to play, then you may well be introducing extra risks which aren't yeah. necessary. Yeah. So I'd agree with that, yeah.